Hello, I'm Crafty Patty and I'm back again. This time I'm going to show you, instead of making a rope bowl on a sewing machine, we're going to show you how you can hand sew it. Because a lot of you don't have sewing machines and you've said to me, what can I make? Well, here you go, I'm going to show you. Here's some beautiful African style woven baskets that you're going to sew by hand. I'm going to give you lots of material ideas lots of different base cords and lots of different ideas on what to wrap with. You'll see that coming up in the video. I'll also show you coming up different designs you can make. This one is more of a floral design, whereas these ones are more spiral designs. And have a look, here's some other ideas that you can do. I've chosen to do this one in the demonstration because it's the hardest. Because I'm going to be able to show you how you carry over your colors so you don't get the line in between and have a nice clean design. So this is the one we're going to demonstrate with, but feel free to do any design you want. They're all beautiful. I wanted to give you a few different options of what you could use for your base cord when you're making your baskets, when you're doing your weaving. This one I got from the dollar store and it's on the thicker side, but being that it's really uneven and it's really squishy, I'm thinking that if I try to use this one, it's going to make a little bit more of an un-uniform basket, like it'll be like thick on one part and thin on another. But in a pinch, you could use this. This was um, pretty reasonable. This was, I think, only um, $3.50 for this one at the dollar store. Next, I went to Canadian Tire to see what they had. They do have sisal rope. Sisal rope was very cheap. Um, I paid about $5.29 for this one. The next in line is your cotton sash cord, which I've been using for all my rope bowls and other projects. And um, this one will give you the most uniform um, basket for weaving because it's very round whereas this one is squishy. This was bought at Canadian Tire and again it's a little bit more squishy but better than this first one and uh, this one's nice and smooth to work with and I think this one will work out quite well as well for wrapping. And also I will supply some links in the description box below where you can get actual rope of polypropylene or cotton rope. And you'll want to have some darning needles with a large eye. And depending on how many colors you want on your design, you'll want one needle per color. And a pair of scissors, of course, to cut your cord. And the other handy item is if you have a fabric washable pen, this is really handy to mark out the divisions where you want to start your designs. And that just keeps your design uniform. Here's one example for you. This one was made from the polypropylene rope and I use the Burnett Handicrafter cotton yarn that's usually used for dishcloths. I did it in a three color design, salt and pepper, gray and black. Now I want to show you something. This basket is really flimsy, which is fine. Most of these I'm not going to be using as baskets. I'm going to be using it as wall decor. Now, when I was making this, I got lazy and I only attached it when I got to my next color. That's one reason it's making it floppy. The other reason is this cord. So what I started to do up in the next rows here, I was attaching it almost every inch as I went along. That, as you can see, made a much firmer basket than down in here. When I'm working on a project and I'm at the end of one of my cords and I want to just have a break or I'm waiting to cut more rope, I just have this little magic clip because it holds really well and it opens up wide enough to go over your cord just to hold that in place while you're getting ready for your next cord. And I'm using the inexpensive sisal rope. Now this is rough to work with 
And when you're working with it, you have to make sure you kind of pull all these little tiny ends and wrap them in. Otherwise, you get these little tiny bits coming here and there. I'm wrapping this with the hemp cord. So that gives you an idea of what that looks like. This one here is turning out really firm and really solid. There's a few reasons for that. One, this is really stiff, the sisal. And I wrapped this by joining it every inch. That will also make a more firmer basket or coaster, whatever you're making. On this design, I have just made it come over every time I get to the next color, I'm making it come further back, further back. And then when I get a little bit further out, I'm making it come even further back. And that's going to give us that little spiral design. And on this one, of course, I've used the three colors. And because I want to show you how to do multiple colors in a basket, I'm going to choose to use the paper cording for this basket. Now you can just start wrapping and have fun with it and just put in colors wherever you want to, or you can really work out how you want your design to look and be. And if you need a guide for that, then you can take a piece of scrapbook paper. I've just got a square piece here. I fold it in half this way, fold it in half the other way, corners to corner. And let's start by preparing some of our cord and get it threaded on to one of our large eye darning needles. And you don't want to work with more than uh, three meters. That's actually too much. Somewhere between two and three is plenty. So you can just guesstimate and use your arm length and you can pull that out. And that will be plenty to start with. And we'll thread that onto our needle. And you'll just pull it back about a foot, or doesn't matter how long really. As long as it stays, the needle stays on. And we'll just put that aside and do the same for your other colors. To get it started, I find the easiest way is I use a little bit of double-sided tape just to stick the cord to the end so it doesn't keep sliding off. So I'm just wrapping the end here. And I'm letting the tape go slightly off the end here and I'll just butt it up to the end. Now grabbing your first color, not the needle end, but the opposite end, just pull through until you've got your end. Here it is here. And we start by placing the cord this way because we're wrapping with this end and we're going to wrap this way but we want to secure it so we need a little tail here so this secures our first wrap so just holding on with your thumb bring your thumb up as close as you can to the end here and let's start our wrap and for this first little section we're not going to do it really tight because otherwise it will be really hard to get our rope to bend. I'm wrapping so each one butts up against the next one, but I'm not wrapping really super tight because I'm never gonna be able to get this to bend otherwise. So continue wrapping until you've got about, say, three inches. Once you've got about three inches wrapped, I'm gonna just hold on to this with one of my little magic clips just so I don't lose all that wrapping I just did. And then I'm going to start bending this and really working it because I want this to form into a circle. So just keep working it, softening it up a little bit as much as you can. And then once you've got it softened, I like to maybe put it down on the table. It's just a little bit easier to make that first bend. So I'm going to get this part here and I'm going to Squish it really tight together, as tight as you can go. Right in here, really squish it. And once you've got that squished in, you're gonna to continue to wrap this round. 
and you can even out any of the cords that's gotten pushed out of the way that's okay you can adjust it and then once you've got that really nice and tight like that hold on to it don't let it go because it'll spring away I'll just take my clip off here okay if you've had it like this that's fine just turn it around I want it so the cord is coming off the left and you've got your your, your sash cord, laundry cord, is coming off to the left as well as this cord here. Now I want you to bring this cord up so it's sitting in the middle of your two cords. Now if you've lost your circle, just bring it back down again, squish it in and really pull that tight. Once you've tightened it up again, hold on to that, don't let it go. Best probably to hold on like this and squish it together. Now we've got this in between our two ropes. I want you to drop your needle now into the middle of the circle. Pull through all the excess. Give it a little bit of a tug. And this is what I'm saying is the hardest part, just getting this first part started. Now once you've gone through the middle, this then comes up in between these two cords and you're going to pull it tight. And now we're going to start to wrap a little bit more and just hold on to this, this first round here just so it's really tight, just really tight. Okay, once you've got that tight then we can start to wrap a little bit more, you can loosen up. And now we're going to wrap another inch. Once you've got an inch wrapped about, you're going to squish that back in again, just to help to mold that first circle, really squish it in. Again, your cording is in between both of the ropes. And again, you're going to go into the center, pull it all through, straighten it up, pull really tight, really tight, because this is the first part where you really want to get a nice tight circle, as tight as you can. And then again, this cording is coming up in between these two cords here. Just work that around from the back and make sure it's right up close to where you've just brought it through and give it a good tug and we're going to go and wrap some more. And don't wrap more than an inch or so because you want that nice and secure once you've done your wrap again this cording is in between the two like so so you're ready to go down to the center always going down again give it a bit of a tug squishing it all together and then holding tight and this cord comes in between these two cords and make sure it slides right up if you need to work it through from the back side and give it a hand and then really give it a tug and pull tight and wrap some more And of course, the, I'm trying to watch my camera that I'm in view and I'm trying to wrap at the same time. So my wrap might not be totally as neat as I would like it, but I'm constantly watching my camera here. 
So <laughs> you can do a better wrap than me, but try to get it as smooth as you can. And always only wrap about an inch before you have fastened it off again. And again, back in again, cord in between both of them. And down through the middle hole, pulling it through, and give it a tug. And back up between the two cords, making sure it's right up close, and give it a tug. Wrapping again. Continue the process. And watch that you've got enough left over to tie it off. Here, this is what I've got left here. I can probably get me do one more wrap because I don't like to get too far in between the tie-offs to get it nice and secure. But I don't like to waste the core either. Again, in between, rope is up in between, and you're down through the middle. And each time I'm trying to squish this in just that little bit more just to get that nice and round and get that little hole out of the middle there if we can. And I have just take the needle off and we can get a few more wraps out of here with this last cord here. And we'll leave it like that with a little tail. We're going to secure that with our little magic clip. And let's get ready with another color. And grabbing my next color, which is brown. Here's my needle in. Again, finding the opposite end. And now we're going to take off our clip. Here's the last one we worked with. We're going to hold that. On with our thumb we're going to now add our next color by placing that right on the top like so hold it down and bring your thumb right up to where you're going to start to wind now we're going to start to wind our next color right up close to the other color And again, when you're changing color, you kind of get excited and you want to see what you're doing. But make sure that you don't go too far before you tie it off. That's going to give you a stronger and more solid basket. Okay, so I've got just about my inch there. I'm between again. We've got our cord in between the two but not going through the middle. We're going to go and secure on this previous row. Always just the previous row. So we're going to bring that down. And now we've got these two little tails here. We're just going to continue to wrap around those. And there's your last row that you wound and you're going to come in right below in the previous row and then put your needle in between the two rows and pull that through. And again as always pulling tight up in between the two rows again and pull tight. And around we go again. When you're wrapping, I find I bring it, sit it down at this angle here, and then I'm wrapping around like this. Okay. 
back down. And up in between. And you'll find that sometimes on the back here, it, it doesn't sit like where you want it to. So you can just push it over with your finger and you can even out some of the other rows here before you get too far along. And let's keep going. And tie off previous row. Now I'm running out of room. I'm trying to bring these down so I've got even spacing for my pattern. So I won't probably be able to finish that one off because I want to go at least another inch here. So what I need to do is I need to finish this one off. Bring that along with your rope here. And then grab some more of your same color so we can finish off this row. This cording is coming off the end here. You can think about it as always have having these ends on the end here. It's a good way to think about it. Again, holding up right up next to the next one with your thumb and do a nice tight wrap on that first wrapping there to make sure you secure that good and tight. And then don't forget about your every inch of fastening that off. So you've got to come back down and we've got to fasten this off. And I'm just watching my design here. So I think I might just do one more round here. And one more, I think. And I'm looking at where this is going to fall for my design. That's good there. Here I'm just showing you where this hasn't gone all the way over, so I'm just helping that along. Get that to slide back to the back so it's at the same level. And I'm just about back to the same color here. So I'm going to do one more. Now where I've stopped here, my securing it will come through onto the brown, so I won't see the accent like this anymore. It will just go into the brown and you won't see it. So now you want to start thinking about what type of design you want to do. So I'm going to make sure that this brown comes past my gold up to about here. So let's curl our rope around and we can just attach it with one of my little clips here, get it to stay in place there. And now I've already started part of my pattern. I've got a little bit of brown started here. Then I'm going to do a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow. Then I'll do a different color here, maybe perhaps black, and then I'll start again. But to make it more even and make it so it's easier for you, if you place it on your guide here, you've got your lines and then you can make a guide all the way around and that makes it really easy. So right here, I've pushed the brown over. Here's my line here if you can't see that on camera. I've got my brown already started here. Next I'm going to have 
my next color come to here. This will be my next color. And then my next color will stop here. Just attach that so I don't lose my wrap there. Same with here. This will be my middle color. The purple, by the way, is air erasable and the blue is washable. So in case I don't get around, I'm going to use my washable pen. So now I've made my markings all the way around and that will make it so much easier to know exactly what I'm doing. So now we're getting into some more advanced work when we're adding several colors at once. So we finished off with our brown. I've left my brown attached to my needle. It's all still on my needle. I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to hold on tight. And here's all the other little pieces that we've got to wind in there as well. So what I like to do is always place my new color on the top. So here's all my old ones. So I'm going to place that closer to the bottom. And here's my new color that I'm going to place up on the top. And I'm going to hold it all with my thumb. And I'm going to start to wind the new color really tight on those first few rounds. But I'm only going to wrap about a quarter inch because that's going to be my pattern. So there's a quarter there. I've got a quarter and a quarter, maybe one more. And now this one is now going to get placed and we're going to wrap that in and we're going to get, get our next color, which is going to be my yellow. And now I've got another color I've got to put in here. So holding all those tight, adding the next color up on the top, holding close with my thumb, and now I'm going to wrap the next color really tight. And I'm trying to wrap all of these excess ends in. And I'm wrapping a quarter inch for my design. So I've got a quarter, quarter, and quarter. Now when you're doing designs, you get kind of uh, all excited about your design and you forget to tie it off. So now that I'm coming down to here, I'm going to tie it off. And bring it down from, to my previous row. One more wrap, make sure it's secure. Okay, now we have to decide what we want in here, what colors we want. So I'm going to use black. So now I'm going to come in and then I'm going to put black in the middle here till I get to my next pattern. Now don't cut these strands here because we're going to repeat the pattern. We're going to take this along with us until we get to the next pattern. All I want you to do is cut any little ends like this so we're not getting too much bulk in here. So we can take those off. And now we're bringing the yellow one down with the all these three colors. We're going to hold that in place. And now we're going to grab our black and that will be our center color and now we're going to wrap with our black holding all those nice and tight thumbnail right up to the edge there and really tight up against and we're going to wrap up until we see our next pattern line so you've got a little bit to think about all at the same time you're thinking about you want to make sure you remember to tie it off 
you're thinking about your pattern. So if you want to just do all this in one color just to start out, then you certainly can, but I'm just showing you. So you've got all the techniques down so you can do whatever you want for your design. Okay, again, we're going to go right up till we get to our marking here. And I'm now at my marking. I started with brown. So now I'm going to bring this black up. I'm going to let that drop off, keeping it to the left. I'm going to find my brown, bring this to the top. And all these are going to be held inside. Now we're going to wrap with the brown to start our pattern again. And we're only going to wrap about a quarter inch. Once we've got our quarter inch, again, watching how far along we are, if we've gotten to our inch here, then you've got to tie it off. So let's bring that down. And let's tie that off now. So we don't forget. Now we've already done our brown, we need to do our orange. Bring this brown up into the middle, bring the orange to the top, holding all these three colors together, and let's wrap with our orange now. Done our orange, find our yellow, bring that to the top, and hold on to our other three colors. And now wrap with your yellow. And now we want to fasten it off again. And fasten it off. And you've done your pattern of brown, orange, yellow, and we're going to start our black again. So holding all our other three colors, and bring your black to the top, holding on to your other three colors, and wrap with the black. And I'm watching my markings here and also how far along I am before I have to fasten it off. We're going to do some more rounds until we get up to our marking here. And I'm at my marking, so I'm going to start with my brown, finding my brown to be on the top. Put 
there's my marking so I know I have to stop to start my next color which is orange. Getting close to my one inch gap here. So I'm going to tie that off. And bringing up my cord and now finishing off with my yellow for the pattern. And finishing off with my yellow and finish off our pattern. We're starting back with the black. And that's how you bring all your cords along with you if you're going to do several different colors all at once. All right, so I think you probably got the hang of that now. I'm going to continue to wrap and I will finish up my last pattern, which is coming up right here. And then we'll see what I'm going to do next. So what I'm going to do now is just bring this pattern so it's one step further over to the left. So my pattern was brown, orange, yellow. I've brought my black right up to the brown and now my brown will be on top of the orange, the orange on top of the yellow and the yellow on top of the black. And I'll carry it through that pattern until I've got one round and I'll show you what we've got. And now I'm going to explain one more thing for you. You see on this one here, I don't have any white into the black on the previous row. I've got just a nice solid design. You see here where the yellow has come into the black, the orange has come into the brown. Well, to prevent that, you just have to be organized and you have to think ahead a little bit. So right now, I might have enough I don't have quite an inch here, so I'm doing pretty good here. But I have to plan ahead so I don't get too far along so I can tie it off. So my next color here is going to be orange. So I'm going to bring, them up, bring in my orange. So I'm just watching how far I've got along here. And I don't have quite an inch yet, so I can continue with my next color. I'm going to just do one more wrap of my brown here. Now I'm going to come in with my orange. And now in with my orange. And I've only got this amount to do with my yellow before I come to the black. It's a little bit more than an inch, but I can sneak that one in there. So I'm going to continue now with my yellow. And now we're into the black. So we're going to bring in our black now. And then we'll just wrap two blacks before we get too far along and now I've got my black that can come into the black and that will be hidden. So it's just a matter of planning it out and then you can get a nice even clean pattern without the lines in here. I showed you that in the beginning because that's the easiest way to do it but if you want to be getting into more advanced designs then I just want to make sure you know how to do it all. So I'm going to take my black up as far as I can go before I get to my next color because I've got a chance to bring my black into my black below. So we'll tie this one off here. And we've got a little bit more black to do to get into the brown. And I'm going to run out, so I'm just going to add another black here. And I'll do the same thing I did on this other round here, is I'll do my brown, orange, and then black, and then tie it off as soon as I get to this black portion here so that I can get not too far before I tie it off again. And that's how you want to keep it so you've got 
none of these colors showing up in the to the rows below and you can keep it nice and clean that way. And if you have too far to travel with your black and it's getting too long before you want to tie it off because that won't make a very good basket, then plan it out by your next color. I want to add brown up here and my brown is right here. So if I tie off here, it will look like it's part of this design right here and you won't see it. So I'm going to tie off right here with one round of brown. And we'll tie it off right into the brown. And then we'll just start a brown up here and you don't see it that way and you have a nice clean pattern. Okay, so same with any color, just join it right in the middle and then it'll look like the pattern below and it'll work out beautifully. And there's how the pattern's turning out. I've continued on a few more rows here. And this makes a wonderful coaster or a hot plate. But if you want to turn this into a bowl, then you just need to start working up your sides now. So let's take it from here, where I've just finished off with some of my blue and I'm ready to fasten it off. <laughs> I'm trying to look through the camera and not my fingers, so I'm looking a little awkward. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We've got that taken off. And I'm going to come back down as we always would to fasten it off. But this time, instead of keeping it flat, we're going to work this up onto the previous row. So just start bringing it up on top. And then continue to wrap. And then when you're ready to come down again, again, holding it up on top. And continue with bringing it on the top, all the way around your circle. And so I've decided to stop there and just turn this into a little shallow dish because I'm running out of the dark navy. And so I'm going to finish it off now. So I've just done my last three colors going into my navy and I'm going to just tie this off a couple times just to make sure this is good and tight. So I've already tied it off once. I'm going to tie it off again. And once more for good measure. And I want to have this navy not go any further past my navy on the second row here. So I'm just going to cut this cording off. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to angle it in so we've got a nice slow decline into here. So I'm just going to come in here and take out some of the bulk from inside on the inside area here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the underside of this cording just to help to hold it together a little bit. And I'm going to continue wrapping. And after doing just a little bit more wrapping, I'm going to come in and I'm going to tie this off again. And then wrap a bit more. And now because you've, you don't have all that rope to go around, you can actually do it on the left if that's easier for you. Just to get those last wraps in there. And do this quite tight if you can. 
And now I'm going to put a little tiny bit more glue on here so the wrapping stays in place. And then I'm going to wrap all the way around so I can come in and go through the back and then come back down in here. And then just keep wrapping it around to cover up that end. And then to finish it off, I'm going all the way over and through this way just to do a little finish off. And then on the last round, we're just going to leave a loop and I'm going to bring my needle through that loop to make a knot to tie it. And let's do that one more time. And I'm going to bring my needle through some of my rounds here. And this might be pretty tight. You can use a pair of pliers if you can't get those. If you can't get the needle all the way through. There we go. And one last good tug to get that knot underneath and cut off your end. And you're all done. And if you've got just a little bit showing, you can just cheat and take a little Sharpie pen or I happen to have an artist tro paint marker pen, but a sharpie would do as well. And you can just color that end in and it's all hidden. And there we have our finished African style woven basket. Well, this is more like a plate, because but you could if you wanted to, you could bring the side right up and make a little bowl or a basket.